Beetle Floating on an Autumn Leaf Time Lapse and Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a beetle on a leaf that is floating in the water painting. This is very similar to a painting that I did a very long time ago that um, was before I started my channel. It's probably the, my favorite painting I've ever done. It was cherries that were floating with snails. I will put a I will post this photo um, on Instagram and Facebook if you guys are interested in seeing it because it's my favorite painting and I actually um, I showed it to a couple people and it sold right away and I was like, oh, it's kind of sad. But anyways, <laughs> I have been really enjoying this. If you guys like beetles and leaves, I did a very similar nail art design on my nail art channel and I'll put a link to that in the description box below. So check that out too if you're interested and please click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I began with the background of the painting, which is the water, and so I'm just going to start and add some of the black shadows that are around the leaf. And then on water, there's always really intense shadows and highlights, so I start out with the shadows, and then I'm going to be adding various shades of green, filling in the majority of the background. But then I'm also going to be blending in a little bit of blue, just because there's going to be some reflections off the sky. So just little bits of blue here and there, as you can see around that bottom section um, under the leaf, and then also just a little bit on the side of it is where you can kind of get that and I'm just going to be taking and filling in the rest of it like I said mostly with dark green um, dark green a little bit of light green especially up in that back corner it's pretty dark just to kind of keep it um you know like it's fall and dark tones in the background and then I also am going to take some brighter shades of green and some white and some a little bit of like a scarlety orange I'm going to be adding highlights on my water so this leaf is kind of floating along so it's got little ripple lines going around it so you're going to want to kind of create that just sort of like really soft, smooth lines flowing around the leaf. So like I said, you're going to do some of that with those various colors. The reason you're using that scarlet orange is because that is the color that the leaf is for the most part. So that one is going to also reflect on the water from what it sees from the leaf. And then I'm going to be taking that same scarlet warm shade of orange and just add a layer of that over the leaf. Now the background kind of went over the edges of my leaf a little bit here and there. So this first coat is basically just to rediscover your edges is kind of what I like to think of it as and I'm not going to be painting over my beetle I'm going to be leaving him for the most part except for just his little feet I'm going to be leaving him just white at this point it's kind of going over that and then I'm going to be painting my stem so I started out with brown but then I'm also going to be taking that same scarlet orange color because the stems do kind of match along with the color of the leaf and then some darker shades of brown and some orange and just kind of fill in the leaf or the stem kind of with those colors kind of keep it in that brown tone but add some of those brighter shades just to our more intense um, warm shades just to kind of give it some of that color and then I added some highlights on that with white and black or highlights and low lights with white and black so now with uh, I grabbed a whole bunch of colors that kind of go in that yellow to burgundy category so yellows golden mustard type colors oranges red burgundy brown black white and I'm going to be filling in my leaf just that first layer of color on it so that wherever the veins are the main the main veins I'm going to be taking and just kind of adding those with yellow at this point now they are a much lighter shade more of like a cream color but they have this yellow halo that goes around them so I'm gonna be doing that now so add that yellow halo around where the leaves are or the veins are going to be excuse me and I'm just gonna be taking those filling all of those in I highly recommend having either an actual leaf sitting next to you, um, either that with like a magnifying glass maybe, since this is a much more, uh, much bigger version, or have some good photos of leaves. And especially this time of year, hopefully you guys can still find some good nice orange leaves around, depending on where you live, maybe, maybe not. But um, yeah, I know it's, yeah, for me, if I walk outside, I can find them. Probably not in a week or so because they'll be dried out and crumbly, but for at least for a couple more days, I can still find these out and about. So I'm just going to take and continue to fill in my leaves. And even if you want with something like this, it's so fun. You can kind of set up your little scene as you want it. So you can take and you can have just like a glass of water and set that outside and then take your photos of your leaf or a bowl of water. And you can definitely get the idea here. So then I just kind of took and with diluted black paint, I figured out where I wanted any of my puddles or my little my little water droplets to be on the leaf. And I knew that the back of it was going to be pretty covered with water. So anywhere in that way back area, I also added a wash of it, wash of dark green over the top of it because it's going to be a little bit deeper. So you're going to get a little more diluted color back there. And then I'm going to be highlighting it with white, all my little, my little water droplets. 
And then I also took a little bit of that same blue that I used on the water itself, and I added a little bit of a blue hue to a couple of them. And then you're going to take white and black and all of your colors and add much more intense highlights and shadows on them. So I took just a thin black line pretty much on every on every little water water drop and just kind of define their edges some. You don't have to overdo this. That's kind of a, I don't know, it's so freeing to paint water because there are so few rules with it. It's just so... Uh, available to you. I mean, you can make the coolest shapes in water and you can, you just kind of have to go with the flow with it. And it's one of those things that I think once you figure out how water is, you can just kind of do it in your sleep. You don't have to look at photos anymore. You just kind of have it and you can kind of just figure it out as you go. So just keep adding those highlights in there. And I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I, I really enjoy doing this. It's very similar to painting chrome, but you just kind of have to find them, find the the water essence. So then you're also going to want to take, this is with a kind of like a mustard yellow color and add all of the veins that go between the main veins. So you're basically just adding like this spider web going across your leaf. And you do not have to do this under the water droplets. That's the reason we did those before we added the rest of the detailing to the leaf because everywhere that there's the water, it's going to get a little bit distorted. It's going to be less detailed. It's going to be slightly out of focus, more fuzzy. So you don't have to add all of those details under them because they aren't there. You don't see them anyway. So you don't need to go through, you can kind of skip over those parts. It kind of saves you some time and makes it easier actually. So don't worry about adding any of the details over those. The other thing with the water is that you also have to kind of look at where the main veins are and don't, and let the water be controlled by them because the water is going to kind of stay within them to an extent. Then you're also going to take and on those main veins at some point, I'm sorry, I kind of missed this part, but you're going to want to add a layer of cream paint over them and then add a shadow over or on one side of them with some brown just to kind of, because they do stick up some. So this is why they kind of control the water because the water can rest on them because they have that little lip on them. So then you're going to add that little shadow and then I'm just going to take and add some highlights with white here and there really to make the edges of my leaf a little bit more vibrant. And now I'm going to be adding a layer of charcoal paint over the top of my beetle as a base. This is the way I always seem to paint beetles. I always add, which I've done a couple different times. I always add a layer of charcoal over the top, especially ones that have that really metallic reflective quality to them. Because then as you're adding the colors, the reflections on top, you've got this nice base that kind of just disappears, but just really gives them a richness that is really, really nice. So now I'm going to start and I'm going to be painting over my beetle. This was actually a very quick process, but probably definitely my favorite part of the painting to do. I love, I love beetles. Um, so I was going to be doing it and I kind of looked around for different beetle colors that I liked. And I really, I found one that was kind of like a purple, a lot of purples and blues, and then just a hint of teal and a hint of pink. So that's what I went with. So I grabbed all my purples and my blues and my pinks and my aqua color, and I'm going to be painting my beetle. Definitely same thing. Look at photographs, make sure that you have, or, or if you're lucky enough to be able to go outside and find a beetle, find a beetle, just get, <laughs> just get what you, what you need in order to make it as realistic as possible. Then you're also going to want to add his eye with, I used brown, but you can kind of you know, go by the beetle that you have and then add more intense highlights all over his back because he's so reflective. You need to make sure that you add all of those gorgeous reflections. So thank you so much for watching this. I, like I said, I'd been waiting a while to make this painting. The previous painting I did, which was the mermaid, that was, that was a commission painting. And, um, I had planned on doing this beetle before I did that one. And then I ran out of time. So it kind of got postponed a little bit, but I'm glad I was able to get it to you guys now. I, I'm so in love with this painting. It's going to be hung somewhere year round, even though it's kind of fall themed. So please also don't forget to check out my Facebook and Instagram to see the rest of my art. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.